we yeah, go. Yeah, but how do I know you? Oh, look, we're live over here too. Oh, now I'm dancing in my chair. I'm not dancing because Jumping, I couldn't dance. Dancing. You, Standing you up, made fun of me I last could, time. I could dance sitting down. You made, you made fun of me dancing last time, so I'm not doing it. Not doing it. First of all, Jeffrey's dance is called the not dancing dance. Well, I was dancing last time. It was my joking dancing. It wasn't my true dancing because you didn't know before joining real estate I was a professional dancer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I think I saw you in the cast of Dirty Dancing. You were way in the back uh, against the wall. No, yeah, it wasn't good sure. dancing. It was, I, actually, it was actually a music video. It was actually a music video I was in, but oh wait, for those Marky, of you Mark who actually want to figure bunch. that one, figure Marky, that Mark one and out, the funky bunch. somebody figure out what what music video was I in when I was like twelve years old, maybe thirteen. Wu Tang Clan. No, Wu Tang Clan wasn't even around when I was thirteen. <laughs> what? No, they weren't. Well, well no, I'm sorry. I'm just now. Wu Tang Clan has always been around. Can't say anything negative. Wu Tang Wu Tang Clan now and forever, and all previous versions of them. So. That's right. You I know why? Because they ain't nothing to <laughs> mess with, I heard. Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing. Um, I so, am, uh, so I'm Jeffrey Scott Stanton. And, and uh, that is Jeremiah's J. Man Manero. And welcome to Much to Say About Nothing, a.k.a. the Indubitably Podcast. Would it be Indubitably Podcast or Indubitably no, Podcasting? Love- What's the proper terminology for my English majors out there? I don't know. What is the proper terminology? So what we're saying, folks, if you're on the Insta or if you're on the Facebook, would it be indubitably podcasting, which that's what I think, or would it be the indubitable podcast, which I don't like because I want to have the, the, the Y on there, indubitably. We can't do, we can't do the, because that's like the Facebook. The no, Instagram. no, of course just, not. Of course you can't not. do it no, the, that. the doesn't, is not unnecessary, but I'm saying is it indubitably podcasting? Is it the, is it indubitably podcast? Doesn't sound right. It sounds past. I like indubitable. I like indubitable podcast. Well, let's leave it to the audience and see what they have to say. Alexa dot realtor says, "I don't know." I love that emoji. It's my and, favorite. And I'm so the emoji and drowned it in the ocean. I would like this it's one. Like, hey. So if you're on Facebook and you can actually hear us and you're actually watching us on Facebook, can you just say something so we know that actually that's working? Because sometimes J Man. Um. It doesn't work, so let's see if it works. What he's trying to say <laughs> is so we have much the to say. About, we have much to say about nothing. We have much to say about nothing today um, because it was J-Man's turn to pick a topic. No, 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 no. What's great about podcasting, folks, is that you could always go back into the last episode and see exactly whose idea it was last episode, which it was mine. Yes, it was. So um, go ahead, Jeffrey. Continue on with your shenanigans, sir. I, I don't know what you're talking about. This is what Jeffrey does. Hold on, let me fix my camera over here. He goes like this. I'm here. What are we talking about? I'm here about? now. Look. Yeah. <clears throat> Listen. You know what? I, you know what I would like to talk about. I would look, like to talk about teams and leadership. Okay. You don't sound too excited about the topic, so forget about it. We won't. What's uh, one thing Karen Baker is working? Um, Somebody said they wanted to see Jeff dance. See, the people, you got to give the people what they want, Jeffrey. They want to see a little no, bit no. of the... <laughs> I could see you back in 94 like, hey, I know the owner of this club. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now, you. as for everybody listening to this, how many of you have actually ever been a, in... How many of you may or may not have ever been oh, at a rave inside the Brooklyn Bridge? Inside the Brooklyn Bridge. Oh, stop it. Not, not at true. the Brooklyn Bridge. Inside the Brooklyn Bridge. That's not true. It's very true. Some Where? You, Where would it be? Do you know, there's, there's, there actually at one point was apartments inside the Brooklyn Bridge. The, oh, the legs gosh. are actually hollow. They yeah. were what? Apartments. The legs are hollow. In the legs? So what are they vacant now? Like Do the, homeless the, people live there? What's the deal? I want to know. I have no, it's to all know. it's all it's all closed up. It's all closed off. I haven't been. I've actually haven't been there in years. Somebody yeah, lives there, there right now. And <coughs> lives if there right not, now. there's a realtor watching this. 
who is trying to claim that as they just hung up their phone. They're trying to sell the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> they're like, yo, we got to find it. There's real estate there. If it's unclaimed, uh, maritime law states that if we, we go there and we stake a claim, then that's, that'd be no, that's not how maritime. That's not how maritime law works. Take it from a bully. Bro, I'm a pirate. You don't know. Works. You know. I drink Captain on occasion. It makes me a pirate. <laughs> Uh, I uh, I did take out my gum because I know that's that is not uh, proper and courteous on a podcast. But eating but the I, uh, eating I the chocolate covered strawberries and those types of things—that's fine. Yes, that's fine. You do. Uh, but I'm pretty <clears throat> sure that when I spit it out, I, I I did miss the garbage, and it might be, it might be a. Uh... So does, so does anybody have a do the Carlton with that hat on? Here we go, Billy. Billy's on both platforms. Billy, you're multi-listening. We're multi-broadcasting. She's multi-commenting. Whatever. Uh, Omni-viewing. Is that right? Yeah. Do you know what the Carlton is? I know what the Carlton is. <laughs> no. <laughs> I the Carlton is, yes. How beautiful it is to be it's loved the... by anyone. Dun, dun, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. I can't do... Yeah, I know what the Carlton is. Absolutely know what the Carlton is. So uh, what are we talking about, Jamie? What do you want to talk about? Let's just have a conversation. Never have so, I ever. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Sabrina said. Never have I ever seen Jeffrey wear a hat like that. I think indubitable would be the more accurate one, but either are cool. Um, indubitably podcast, says Brit on the Insta. Ah, indubitably podcast. Make it past tense. Yeah, I like that. That's what I did. No, you put podcast. Indubitably past podcast. Tense. Ed, past tense. Podcasted? No, that's not proper. I don't now. think that's proper. Sure. So, so, so let's have this conversation. Indubitable podcast. Indubitably, Indubitably podcast. I think podcast is like could still be the po podcast. Podcast podcasted. Indubitably podcasted. Yeah, but I think podcast is the past tense. Could be the past tense. Like okay. if I if I cast dear and dear. If is I like cast dear and dear? a play, right? What well, that's why they say they say break a leg to somebody in theater because they want you to get cast as nope. in the casted. Yes, yeah. that's yes. That's, that's that's that is correct. That is correct. That is correct. <clears throat> okay. Anyway, so um, tell me something. Good afternoon, Sabrina, the tech evangelist. Thank you, Sabrina. So um, let's uh, let's talk about something. Well, let's talk about how Jeffrey didn't do his homework. He was supposed to get the Bitmoji done so that we could have a lovely side by side. I, I did not uh, logo. I worked hard I on this stuff. I have been working. I have been working on dealing with designing corporate compliance classes um, since since the week before, the week of between Christmas and New Year. I know, but it's, it's part of my job. Listen, we have to make sure everybody's compliance. We have to make sure everybody knows the laws. So <clears throat> I have this question: What if you could learn one thing? Not even real estate, not even necessarily real estate related. If you could learn one thing or wanted to learn one thing this year, what would it be? What would it be if you could learn one thing? Um, I'm going to say the metaverse. <laughs> he wanted the topic to be the metaverse. And I said, I'm not well versed enough in the metaverse to have that conversation. So I actually, know, let's, have, it, let's have this conversation. Let's, no, yeah, let's, 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 let's have this hold conversation. On, hold, on, hold, on, hold on. Let me say what I want to say first. Mm -hmm. I'm not either. And that's why I want to talk about it. I just want to talk about okay. the possibilities. I don't think anybody right now who's currently speaking or instructing, who is a subject matter expert at all, knows enough about the metaverse because it's it's evolving now as we speak. So there isn't many people that are SMEs except for Zuck himself who could tell us all the things that he has planned for in the future. <clears throat> and I'll, so, I'll text him after. Okay. Um, so th this is my theory on this, and someone actually asked me the other day, we wanted one of our role plays like a month or so ago, and someone asked me, oh, can you explain NFTs? And because if anyone read the article, it was yes. in the real deal. There there, there was a, a team that's a member of Element that was tapped by the person who bought this huge piece of the metaverse to actually sell 
quote unquote real estate inside the metaverse. And they're going to be the right. exclusive agents for this quote unquote real let's, estate. Let's inside call the it metaverse. virtual real estate. Virtual real estate. Yeah. Cause that was part of the conversation that me and Jay man yeah. had when we, before we started this was, well, it's not real estate cause it's not real property. So, cause it, it would be, if anything, it would fall underneath the personal property category. And technically by that means you would not need a real estate license cause you do not need a real estate license to sell personal property anywhere that I know of because it's personal property. So I, I don't necessarily want to talk about what it is, but I'll tell you part of the conversation. So we were talking about like NFTs. Why yeah, is it? Start with why that, is defining something, what an NFT is. So why is a non fungible token? Why is that worth something? Like these people are selling artwork and you know, or what was it? They, they cat weird, the, such weird artwork too. Not for nothing. Some of it, what it comes up in my feet, I'm like, it's so weird. Yeah. What was it the cat or the cat in the toaster? That original gif was sold. Was it the cat in the toaster and, or the cat, the cat, the toaster and the rainbow, whatever that original, that video that was running on YouTube, which is the longest running YouTube ever constantly on, on, uh, on YouTube. So the original gift of that was sold. It was sold for some ridiculous amount of money. <clears throat> so someone said, well, why is that worth any money? And my answer was, well, why is anything worth the amount of money? It's you should buy something that I don't care. If it's NFT. I don't care if it's, if it's cryptocurrency, I don't care if it's the metaverse. I don't care if it's any investment. There's two reasons why you want to buy. If you want to buy a, this digital artwork, cause you like the artwork by all means, buy it. Like if you find value in it, then buy it. But it's only worth something if someone's willing to buy it from you. That that's the premise of the exchange. Choo -choo. Like something's only Hold worth on. if I can buy for you, or <clears throat> or if I can exchange of something of value for it. So if I have, say, this you know, this tissue, what is this tissue worth? Well, to me, it's is worth it the brand value new or, so, to... or is it used? No, it's, it's brand new. I just pulled it out of the tissue box. Just pulled okay. it out of the tissue box. Could it's be brand new. So to, to me, the value is that if I have to blow my nose, I have it. Therefore, if my nose is running, I have a tissue box. So it is value to me. But if I say, J-Man, do you want to buy this tissue? Is this tissue of value to J-Man? Now, this is a tangible item. He can put this in his hands and he actually can use it. But he has to decide if it's worth to him, if he has another tissue, or he has something that's equally desirable, just like you do in real estate. Real estate is based upon equal desirable or replacement. Cool hat. I have one very similar. But what is this tissue worth to him? Do you want to buy this? If he says no, is this tissue worth the dollar that I spent for it? That's where you get tired. Anytime you're selling something that's not tangible, you know, how do you determine what the value is? I don't know where he went. <clears throat> so if you believe that you're buying something in the metaverse, you're buying a property in the metaverse, quote unquote, virtual real estate in the metaverse, if it's something that you find of value, then by all means, go ahead, buy it. If it's something that you believe other people are going to buy a value, and that's the only reason why you're buying it, then it's an investment just like anything else. And it's not the investment that you're going to make money. It's an investment you have a potential chance to lose money. So that's when things become, to me, if there's a value in it, that's what it becomes. Should I actually buy it? He was too busy listening to his whole thing. So th that's my whole thing. With I know. The, the I heard. NFTs. I heard all of that, and and I totally agree. Um, and it's the same thing. Like even just real quickly, it's the same thing. And I don't want to name any any bitcoins or not any bitcoins, any cryptocurrencies. It's the same thing. Like they release new cryptocurrencies. All of a sudden, it goes from point zero 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 five, and all of a sudden, three days later, it's at like point zero one, and it was like, oh, I made a thousand percent return. Can you sell it? Is my Returns first question. not realized until it's sold. Correct. Right? Can you buy it? Is it something of value? Is it something monetary that I can use that to purchase something that I want? Because that's what that's what money is. Money is I'm going to give you something that somebody at one point said was worth a dollar, but it's only worth a dollar based upon what I can buy for it for a dollar. Does that make sense? Like a dollar is worth nothing. What is a dollar worth? What 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 is it actually worth? Is it worth anything? Because today it might be worth a pack of gum. Tomorrow it may not even be worth a pack of gum. Or it may be worth 10 packs of gum. So taking that into account, you have to look at anything you're buying in the metaverse. Listen, if you're buying it because you want to be cool and you want to have a hangout with your friends in the metaverse, great. Then buy it for the fun of it. Are you, are you done moving my... Uh... 
Oh, well, I know how to get you to stop talking is to distract you with making your your side of the uh, of the stage <laughs> smaller. <laughs> no, well, I agree. But here's my thoughts. A couple things. Uh, you, you, there is no place that I think is prime real estate currently because unlike real estate, right? You're you're near Central Park West. That's a real mm -hmm. spot. <clears throat> right now in a virtual world that's being created for me to buy let's call it acreage in the metaverse it could be worth a bajillion dollars in the future we don't know <coughs> it could be Absolutely. worth nothing can i push, can I push yeah. you there for one sec because this is a good point to bring up so the thing with real estate is unless you live in dubai you can't make new real estate you cannot make new land land is land and that's what it is for the most part, there are, yes, they built those islands and those types of things. <clears throat> when you're talking about cryptocurrency, for the most part, the original cryptocurrency, there's a limit to the number that will ever be issued, and that actually is in the original programming. So based upon that, it's a limited supply. There may be some value based upon the limited supply. Like, we'll even say, even if it's a collector's item. The problem is right now with the metaverse, you're right. You spend more money for the view of Central Park. You spend more money for the view of New York City. <clears throat> you spend more money for that beachfront property. And because they're not building any more beachfront property. They're not building more property, Central Park, Central Park. They're not building another version of it. That's why it has some value to it. But in the metaverse, what's the value? Do we know how big it is? It's not like New York City, where it's only a certain amount. It's not like Rochester or United States, where it's certain geographical restrictions. Right. It's not even like the original Bitcoin, where it says we're only issuing X amount of land. Because how do you determine what's an acre of something that doesn't exist? And here, here's the other part. And and I I started thinking about this in a, for a couple of different reasons. For those of you who have kids, or grandkids, or nephews, or nieces, or cousins, or adults for that matter, that got anything Oculus related over the holidays and played with it like i played with my nephew's oculus and i'm like it was the new one the oculus rift 2 the oculus mm -hmm. i was actually thinking about getting one just play with it oh bro i'm getting one now I, like why you yeah. let me play with these kids toys now i have to have it <laughs> and so but I'm, I'm playing with it and i'm like the possibilities because then it really gets my they start firing and going man all the things that we could do with this but let's just mm -hmm. say for a second, because then I combine that with I'm watching my kids play Minecraft yesterday, right? And my son goes into a hole. This is all imaginary, right? My son goes into a hole in the ground, which you would think, oh, it's just a little hole in the ground. And he's got this expansive underground complex, yep. right? In this virtual world. And you're like, well, nobody would pay money for virtual things. Look at these kids. Are sh my, my kids got Roblox. Robux, they call it or whatever, and all this money that to buy virtual things in virtual worlds. So they're doing it right now, and these are these are our consumers in another ten years, right? These are the they're they're going to be used to buying virtual things that if they leave and, but may the, not but be worth anything. But that's the thing. So, and again, no inventory. This is where this is where I go into. So I'm going to give you real money to buy something that doesn't exist. So, it doesn't okay. exist so, in the tangible sense. I know. I'm playing devil's advocate. I'm playing yeah, yeah. Devil's, I'm playing devil's yeah. advocate here. So, but yeah, again, you spend, you spend real money to buy music. Does that exist? Well, it's not, well, you're not buying the music. You're buying, you know, when you bought a CD, you're buying a CD. You know, when you buy stuff, you're generally getting something in return for the most part. But if I'm buying a video game that's online, like, am I really getting anything besides? Listen. This is my thing. If you want to, and I guess I'm not, I'm not giving anyone financial or investment advice, but if you're buying it that, hey, I want to, it's legal, Jeff. Yeah. If you want to buy it that, hey, you know, um, I'm buying this for fun because I want to go hang out in there and I want, like, to me, that makes sense. But the people making, the people that will make the money on this, I don't even know if this is a name. If it's not, just let us know. We'll switch topics. But this is the topic yeah. Jimmy and what to I, talk about. I, I think, listen, put it in the comments again if you think this is interesting because I've, this, I got so much more to say after Jeffrey's done, but go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I, I think you just have to be careful of, of what you believe that you're buying and understand what you're actually, actually purchasing. 
you know, am I personally that, hey, I'm going to buy a couple of acres for the chance that a couple of years from now it may be worth a huge amount of money and I'm willing to take that investment risk, then I'm fine with it. Hey, I'm buying it so I can, you know, my Oculus, which I'm probably going to get one this week, an Oculus so I can go down there, I can go there and hang out on my own virtual property. Then again, that's something cool to do. Listen, I buy stupid stuff all the time that I play with it a couple of times and, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so Jeffrey, I, I, or if you're watching this, I just want to say that um, Puerto Ricans or Hispanics or in my family, let me just say that because I can't generalize an entire uh, group of people, but we celebrate Three Kings Day, which is tomorrow. And so if you want to get me an Oculus, yo, thank you. Little, cri uh, little, Chris little Christmas, how I was brought up. So if you want to get me one for Little Christmas, you get one for Little Christmas. How much is yes. the Oculus? Okay, talk let, I, I'm gonna and, this. and yeah, so I'll, I'll let me expand on this. Cause I, I, again, like I have so many different ideas of this and, and really like it's happening right now. Because if you watch kids who are watching YouTubers who have mods that are created or they have all these worlds that are created by other people who are these, they're programmers, if you will, right? That create these, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a different version of Minecraft. It's Minecraft mixed with... Um, that that popular Korean show, I can't remember what it was. Beep boop beep. Squid boop. Games. Squid Games. Yeah. So they have a Squid Games mod for Minecraft, right? Somebody created that. Somebody paid for that. Now let's take that and apply it to the metaverse and say, okay, I'm gonna build this incredible world. Virtual. But how do you, this is my question. Can I just ask you? So how you how do you actually build that world though? I, I, that's above my. I don't know, but if somebody does. Right. Let's just forget about okay. how, how for a second. So let's just say somebody creates this amazing world that I can't afford in real life. And and look at um, Ready Player One. I think is a is a good movie that's very similar and predicts the future when it comes to this. But um, where they create this world that I can go live in, this utopia or this really amazing home that I can say, Jeffrey, hey, we're gonna have a dinner party this evening or a networking event at my crib. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Meet me in the metaverse, right? And we go there and I bought this from a famous architect in the metaverse world. Okay, so now, now you're talking about potential value because you're talking about famous people and that, that literally is, then you get, because part of, and, and literally, for, for those of you who want to Google it, or go to the real deal, Type in Alexander Brothers Metaverse because they're quote unquote the first luxury brokers in in the metaverse, and they actually um, got the deal to sell the property from the developer. And the developer paid, as I'm looking on the news here, four point three million dollars for these virtual uh, properties. I knew you were doing research. So how much? Yeah, no, was I told it? you I was googling. I was yeah, yeah. Four point three million dollars that that they paid. So what, that they what paid. does yeah, that, was, actually, what does that include? What did like what did tell me more? <clears throat> Um, that's what I'm actually waiting for the article to actually pull up because oh, the stream so maybe here, we'll, I don't we'll put everything. it in the comments and we'll put it in the description so you guys can take a look at that. Yep. Uh, but but then the so other now part of there's, this, as you notice, I just totally locked up. You froze. Oh okay, god, I can still hear. Oh, okay, I can still hear. Um, I, I think the other part of this. So we're talking, it's 2.0 to 3.0, right? 3.0, we're we're in we're immersed in this world and we're walking around. But right now, what we could do. Right now, what we could do, I mean, you're, you're, you're in every luxury market across the United States, right? Yep. And so let's think for a moment that somebody calls me like, hey, I'm in Dubai. I was thinking about buying some real estate in Manhattan. Okay, let's do cool. some virtual tours. Uh, I have my messenger dropping you off an Oculus tomorrow. Okay? Find somebody in Dubai who's an Amazon guy, really, but... <laughs> <laughs> and drops it, drops it off to this this person. I then say, meet me in my virtual office, and then we have four, five, ten Matterport tours where we can be in the property. We can walk through. We have different points of interest, different things that are highlighted. Okay. Like, hey, here's a a wolf uh, oven. Here's this. Here's the terrace. We come over here. We can expand certain things in the view. It, it, it's. It's almost better in many ways. I mean, you can't touch it and smell, and, and you don't have all. Well, you can have the sounds, I guess, but you could highlight mm -hmm. so many more things as a listing agent for somebody else showing your property in this immersive uh, metaverse. 
Yeah, but you know, but you don't really need the metaverse to do that. I mean, if you, if you're talking about like that, you can talk about uh, you know companies like uh, uh, um, who does those three D Matterport renderings. Matterport, it's Matterport. That's that's literally what that's it what is. What you just said, yeah. So you're not listen to me, uh, yeah. It's, so like in that no, I was I was I was looking at something for you. So with that, it is like I get that because I'm looking at something that I actually can buy. So I'm just I'm pulling this up, and this again is pulled up from the real deal. <clears throat> so what was purchased by um, it was purchased by Republic Realm, and this is going back in December. Um, investor and developer Virtual Land they paid four point three million dollars on Tuesday for a property in the Sandbox, which is a popular metaverse oriented towards gaming. That launched this week after four years of development. Okay, let me explain what's going to be sold because this is, I guess, interesting. Uh, Republic Realm will partner with Atari, the seller, and oh, one of the earliest and largest yeah. land hold land holders in the sandbox to co-develop property. I love Atari. To co-develop the property, and again, I'm using the word property loosely. I'm, you know, I'm just reading the article. Right. Uh, to co-develop the property, which includes seven parcels. Including a 24 unit by 24 unit estate that's among the largest in the virtual world, and each one by one plot is the real world equivalent to 86 meters by 86 meters in length and 128 meters in height. It's a big piece of property, but it's the real world equivalent of. So, generally, what's going to happen is, and this is when he was saying, you know. Hey, I'm going to invite you over to my metaverse, and you know it's, it's this cool place designed by the architects. That's where I believe value will start showing. When you have a designer, and and, and again, the core. I'm saying architect is more like a designer, right? Yeah, an architect designer, where you now can go to the top designers in the world and say, "Listen, I have an exclusive property on the metaverse because it's only this it, it's this section of the metaverse we own is only this big." So now you're saying it's like Manhattan. So it's a limited section where you now can build and design anything you've ever wanted to as this designer, as this architect. Like if you wanted to do the pool running from the first floor to the second, like you can do whatever, limit right. your imagination. Right. And then it's marketed as this metaverse property, this virtual property was designed by this famous architect, this famous designer, this famous programmer that you can buy and no one else can own. Now I see the potential of having some value to it because now you're talking about just like the NFTs where it can only be one. And when you have a name associated to that, then I get it. As far as, oh, I own a parcel that's the equivalent of 90 meters by 90 meters. What does that do for you? Like there has to be something else right. that people may want, and listen, people may want it just as bragging rights. Well, and, and, say, and I almost oh, think, I like this. right now, since it's in its infancy, you could almost say, okay, just like what, before the West was developed, it's just like Montana, where right? we give Billy some shout outs here, and plus I've been watching a lot of um, Yellowstone, so it's almost like I only have time between Yellowstone episodes, guys. I'll be honest with you, that's my life. But um, like Montana before, not that it's even developed currently, but somebody goes there and they buy a thousand acres and there's nothing else around there at that point and it's super cheap. They buy it mm -hmm. first, right? Speculative that it's going to be developed or they make plans to say, hey, we buy a, th and I, I don't know how to accurately bring, the, you know, convert that in metaverse terminology, but let's just say a thousand meta acres. And it's nothing now. It's worthless. But my plan is to then recruit developers, just like a, just like if I was developing land, right? I'm going to recruit mm -hmm. developers, programmers, architects, and now I'm going to make this the new place to be, the new sandbox, the cooler sandbox for real estate people. Because you got that gaming sandbox. Like that's, I think, if you really think abstract and totally outside of our the world in which we live, because it's 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 a world in which we can create i think the limits, it is, but the limits. difference is if you do that in montana it's a fixed it's i'm just i'm not fixed, I forget about my like know, the location just, in the mountains know, for a second i'm just using land like land a lot of land so you, you buy that land but there's a thing no one can add more land to that yes i know i own this thousand acres and next to me there's another thousand acres so i get that 
So what happens if I own a thousand acres and people can develop it around me and it's somebody's walking by. People can develop it around me and all of a sudden now in the program, you know what? We ran out of space. We're going to add more space. So like I said, I don't know enough that if these are like cryptocurrencies, some of the cryptocurrencies are where there's a limited supply, but Again, how do you do the measurement? How do I say, oh, you own a thousand acres? Yeah, I think either way, like there has to be an, an amount of something that you, or an area. And could they mm. dilute it just like anything? Yeah, but I think if I develop my parcel, like that's where I think the power is. Like I'm going to develop yeah, this. So I, like, I don't give a shit what you do in your, you're, you're my neighbor. You better get, you better buy everything around me because I'm going to build some dope shit. <laughs> you guys are going to. And the, and that's what it around. comes down to. It's like, I yeah. don't want to own the most expensive house in the block. I want to own the average house and they start building expensive houses around me because it brings up my right. value. Like right. I, I get that. As long as you understand what you are or aren't actually buying. And again, I, 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 we're just talking about buy now because it's cheap. Experts on this. Buy but now, it was, yo, make, I'm going to be an expert on article, this by the end so. of the year. I promise you. I promise you. Orin and Alexander, Douglas Elman's top performers for the last few years, performed partnership with Republican Realm. The Metaverse developer paid again $4.3 million. Um, they plan to develop and sell properties in an architecturally significant master planned community in the virtual world. Dude, it's so um, the Alexander said. brothers said, oh my gosh, I we didn't want, know this. I know, exactly. The Alexander yeah. brothers said, we want to focus on trophy properties in the various metaverses. Um, or an Alexander said in an interview, location design will be the prime consideration. So, do so they I have that. something that you can like? What can you see? Do you have to put on your your to your Oculus to go see this stuff? I don't know. That's what we got to find I, out. I, I, Tune in next yeah, week for again, part two of the metaverse. And again, this everybody, is, I'll be on vacation. This is but like if you you think about it is yes, you know, it reminds me of Farmville. Yeah. So there was a real estate company. I think it was in 90-something. I don't want to say the name of the real estate company. That was the first real estate company to open up their office inside the virtual world. And they were opening it in, like, I don't know if it was Farmville or if it was the game your kids play. What was that game you said? Minecraft. Minecraft. Or Roblox. One of those. One, one of those they, they opened up. Somebody can Google who it was. I don't want to say the name of the company. Um, but to me, it, it's, like, yeah, it's not real estate, but I get where the attraction is and I get where the possible you can make money. Or like I said, if you're going to do it because, because, hey, I think this is a cool thing to do. I have some money that I actually can do to invest this. Then I think that's great. If, you, if you're doing it as an investment and you believe and willing to lose that, or if it's something that, hey, I'm buying this because this is one of a kind. And that's why I kind of get the, the um, non-fungible tokens is because I own the original. What I don't get about it is I can take a screenshot of 90 of those. Like, that's the part that I don't get. Like, well, I think the screenshot isn't the same as the actual thing, like, is alive. It's Right-click save. You, you can. Now, again, the, I know about the, 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 the... Yeah. I, I get it. The blockchain yeah. says, no, Jeff doesn't own it. Jeremiah owns it. So I do have the bragging rights that Jeremiah's. I own the original. Jeremiah, yes. sorry. J-Man owns it. Yeah. I very do. J-Man owns it. So I get that he owns the original, but to me that potentially dilutes some of the – it dilutes some of the potential worth to it when anyone else can just – anyone else can just like copy it. But yeah, it's what's it worth to you. And that's really real estate because J-Man, what is – I'm talking about you know, looping this back around to real estate is – because what is real estate worth? It's worth someone what someone's willing to, willing to pay for. It. Right. You know, and is there an intrinsic value that if it's going to be my home where I grew up with my family, do I want more because of the emotional attachment and the intrinsic value? I may. Now, could you put a dollar amount on the intrinsic value? Like is intrinsic value is, is growing up having your family growing up there and having a place for your kids? Is there a dollar amount that that's worth or does it go straight to these are the three different ways we compare a house. We use comparative market approach. We use uh, the building. We use uh, what is it? Uh, construction approach and investment approach. However, I'm saying them wrong. But like, how do you determine it? It's what someone's willing to pay. And even goes back as far as that, including more to real estate is it's like, how do you get paid? You get paid based upon real estate agents, based upon 
your perceived value of what the consumer perceives you're worth. So really, is it's, it comes down to my original thing is, what's a dollar? And why is a dollar worth a dollar? Is a dollar worth a dollar because the government backs the dollar? Or is a dollar worth a do dollar because I can go buy a pack of gum? to give you something, right? <clears throat> that, that's well, the reason if, why it's if, worth anything. If you're just tuning in on Instagram, what we're talking about now is the metaverse. And, and it's neither one of us are experts on this not, metaverse. Not huh? And to say again, neither one of us are experts. We're not giving I will advice be. on it. We're, we're just having, we're having a conversation about it. That, that literally what it is. We're literally having a conversation about it. Though, listen, <clears throat> what I think would be really Future cool, I think there's cool ways right of here. using it. So maybe it's one of those where you're using the metaverse for like virtual networking, where you can hold a networking party and instead of doing it on Zoom. Meeting with buyers, you do meeting it, with sellers. Yeah, where you're actually doing avatars of yourself and those types of things. But again, you have to be careful with that because I think you're removing the personal, the personal aspect, aspect of it. If it's if it's an avatar of me opposed to me, of course. But some people might like that. Absolutely. Now, could you do I, like? I think your... I prefer your avatar. <laughs> <laughs> could you do well, like? Jeff, uh, what are you, you doing know... here? Can you send your avatar, please? Come on, man. Could you do like a client party, a client appreciation party on the metaverse? I think that would be think about just like think about client appreciation party right, and then you have all these like fun virtual activities. We have axe throwing, we have race car driving, we have roller coaster riding, we have like all of that in this virtual world. I ah, dude, it's like like to me, I think there's some I think there's some cool uses of it, but again, I think it's gonna really depend upon how well accepted it becomes. Does it become something that's mainstream or does it become something that, hey, this is the cool thing? Because remember, I don't know if it was Farmville. There was another one where like you went. I meant, it wasn't Farmville, one of those. But you can go fishing and yeah. I think it was called a ruin something I used to play. You can go fishing and you get these little coins. And when well, you get the coins, you can trade them for this. And then, you know, and back then, this is going, this is going way back. Like people would send you a message. Hey, I'll give you 20. I see you have this. I need it to get to the next level. I'll give you 20 bucks. So then having that card, having that sword became something of value. But guess what? That game's no longer in existence. Yes. Now, I would agree with all of that. But we're talking now about somebody who has a combined user base of about 3.8 billion. Mm -hmm. When there's like, how many people on the entire internet? No, yeah, not that, 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 that I agree. That literally would, right. that literally would be the equivalent of, do you remember when there was, I don't know if anybody remembers this, how old you are. You remember when there was like five TV stations, there was two, four, five, seven, nine, and 11. Like that, those are, those were the, and some of the older than me remember there was only three of them. That literally is if like three of those stations got together and said, we're only broadcasting this. Like that's what, the, so I get that they do have it, but my question is this: because again, I don't know enough about it. Like, if I don't have an Oculus, can I participate in the metaverse? But guess who sells the Oculus? They do, but guess who also sells the Facebook portal, which was supposed to be like the Alexa and webcam, and no one ever bought because they didn't want Facebook peeking into their homes. Yeah, as we're on Facebook, and I'm talking about Facebook. So it's not everything that they do. We love you, Facebook. We do. Don't it's not that everything that they stream. do is going to work because of them. The Sims. The consumer yes, that was it, Sabrina. Them. The Sims. Sims. Yep. Like UHF. That. Yes, I remember UHF. I remember switching over to the the UHF radio stations in New York. Sixty eight was um, was a music radio station, if I remember correctly. Um, in in New York City, sixty eight on UHF was a video say but the same thing it's it's the consumer in anything needs to adopt it and if you're you're if you're talking about you know the tipping point the tipping point i believe according to malcolm um is what 12 percent or 14 percent do you remember the tipping point number is because you have early you have early adopters which are the people who wait online like those are the people now to me the early adopters 
are the people that like wait online to get their iPhone. It's the same thing. I'm an early adopter too. Flip cell phone. Actually, I'm an early adopter for um <laughs> for that cell phone. But like, there's a certain percentage of people. Um, I'm gonna ask you the numbers for you because I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. See, Jeffrey was about to make up a percentage, guys. He, but he knew no, I was actually, call it was because. All percentages. What, what's your what's your? Uh... Um, eighty-three percent of percentages are made up on the spot. So ah. I want to see the tipping point. The tipping Talk point. Second. But hey, if you guys, so if you're if you're watching this, you're just tuning in. We're talking about the Rediverse, how it could be used in real estate. I, I'm just, I think it's limitless as far as what can be done. And we we're talking about like a hey, an architect would be somebody who's like a good programmer who could really build this incredible world or house or neighborhood in which people would buy and I, I think that's definitely um and right now you could meet people in the metaverse and say uh yeah michael j the 83 was made up on the spot as well every time you listen to this i'll be <laughs> the percentage of uh, percentages that are made up on the spot that percentage will also be made up uh, on the spot but the uh <laughs> good, good catch michael j i appreciate that uh, but but I think the usage though right now with with the Matterport and the virtual tours you could still give a more a more immersive like come to my virtual office we meet there I then go like this hey Jeffrey let's look at the first unit that we have available boop and it mm -hmm. surrounds us and then we walk through just like I would I don't have to hop in the car think about traffic think about parking think about the doorman go up in the building. All of that wasted time, we go right into the unit. Here it is. I can point things out as we go digitally. I could say this here, these cabinets, all of that. And the listing agent can set that up for me. And they don't have to put it in the private remarks or extra attachments. It's digitally uh, anchored within the immersive video, right? And really, it's not video. Okay. I, found, about I found the numbers. Um, so this is this story saying. So let me just get the numbers here. So... You have the yes, early innovators. On, wait, Sabrina which, said, which, think about the architect in the matrix. Yeah. So when it comes to, we said, oh, it's Facebook. Mistake. Facebook has, you know, these bones. So this is what it comes down to. You have the early adopters, which are two and a half percent of people. Those are the people who wait online for the new iPhone launch for three days before they get like that. That is. Then you have the early adopters, which are 13.5% uh, of people. The early adopters, that's people, it's out, but I want to see that someone else has it. I'm not going to wait online, but as soon as I see someone else has it, I'm going to get it. Then you have the early majority, which is 34%. At that point, it becomes the tipping point. It becomes the point where you'll get the late majority and the laggers. The laggers, as he says, it, those are the people, the only reason why they bought digital telephones is because you couldn't buy rotary phones anymore. Like right. legitimately, that's the reason they say the laggers. What do you mean I but, can't flip my phone anymore? But th that's what you, I have, but that's where it comes down to. So I think right now we are in the innovators to the early adopters. Yep, that's at what, Sunday's the last I waited day for this? in line for this new one here. It's called a Blackberry, it's got a trackball <laughs> on it. And the only reason why he got an iPhone is because he heard next week or next month there are no more Blackbirds are ever going to be able to be used. Did you heard about that, right? Did this continue um, all service and all Blackbirds? <laughs> I did. Uh, but the Tesla phone is coming. I, I don't even want to talk about the Tesla thing. because That'll, that's, that'll, be, that'll that's... be another discussion for next week on how the Tesla phone will put them all out of business. Or, or how when you buy a Tesla, you really aren't really buying anything besides the rights to use the car that they can take away from you at any time if they want to. It's okay. We can talk about it as we ride in my cyber truck. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Until they decide <laughs> the fine, cyber bro. truck it doesn't shouldn't go as fast as that they as it should, and then they just lower it. Or um, they anyhow. say, Jeremiah, we decided your cyber truck you can go to outer space now. <laughs> 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 Let's go. So, if we're going back to the whole metaverse and thing, listen, it's 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 a sell on anything. It is is somebody willing to buy it? And is your pitch, is your show, is your dance, is your line of goods uh, it's gonna be powerful so good. enough for people to make that move? Hold on, ready. And then while we're there in the metaverse, folks, I'm gonna be going like this. J Man has merch. Okay skins that's what it's called guys 
my kids buy skins for their avatars on Minecraft mm-hmm. and ro- my my son's like dad respect a drip I need a mop my the skin on my dude is and I'm like <laughs> yeah like what English he's like look at my he's saying like the outfit on his guy has so much swagger that he you know he bought he spent like ten or twenty bucks to make his guy look really cool virtually so then when he meets his other friends in Minecraft they go damn like he's got this cool wings and this outfit that you can't get unless you pay for it now i have a question are there different countries in the metaverse i don't know we are like all other one. borders because you know what the, the only thing that makes a country is somebody at one point decided they were going to have a geographic line that says if you're on this side of the line you're in my country if you're on that side of the line you're not my country like do they have that and this is the one thing too and i, and I, I actually read an article and again i read an article the other day that one of the things that's going on in the metaverse right now is actually um, a lot of harassment that any other place, not bullying where people are picking on people, but as far as um, things that you'd probably go to jail for if you randomly grabbed another person, um, how they're grabbing other people. Like there's good and bad in everything. But to a certain extent, since it's not, it's not, someone look up the, look up the auto, harassment in the metaverse and you'll see I actually watch the video on it and my guy would be like if super you, jacked in the metaverse and be like yo come here but but again it is like there's no rules to it right now there really aren't yeah so you know the metaverse police is the metaverse police and but but when i bought it's the metaverse a, did i agree to abide by those policing rules oh i'm sure it's in a checkbox that nobody nobody and, that, and that's the whole, and that's the whole thing i'm getting at and, is, and, is I'm, and I'm sure you... because, look at, so I set up my nephew's uh, Oculus and he doesn't have a I Facebook account because he's eight or eight or nine. So I had to set it up using mine. And I'm like, what the freak am I agreeing to? i got to tie my credit card to this. Why my credit card? This dude, <laughs> you, know, like, you know, I'm like, oh, there's a lot of things where it's like, and there was a lot of check boxes that I didn't read. And I'm sure they said, and we never read those. If you leave here. Yeah, you should read it. That's like back in the old days when you'd open up like the, um, you know, when you got a CD and you bought some software and they actually gave you something that says, once you break the seal, you agree to all the terms and conditions that are included inside the envelope. So you couldn't get to the terms and conditions until you opened it up. And once you opened it up, you agreed to the terms and conditions and then you can read it. But since you already opened it up, you already agreed to it. Sorry. <laughs> well, I, uh, I think there's going to be a lot. If you're watching this on the Jamie, playback can you, and you want to join me on the Rediverse or the Metaverse, can, sorry, can, I have a training called the Rediverse, different, different thing. But. Can we talk? Can we bring up one other thing? And it was an article that you posted about somebody being sued for saying something that non real estate related. Yep. In the article five. you posted. Let's go. What was that? Yeah. What so, Jamie, we're we're remembering a bunch of like the trainers groups and stuff, and there was an article somebody was brought up on a realtor. Code of Ethics violation yeah, I, that they're. Yep, yeah, J-Man brought it up, but he wasn't brought up on the Code of Ethics violation. It was a person who was a pastor, um, mm, was also a part-time real estate agent in the state of Montana, where um, real quickly, right? They, this church, this organization, normally deals with some feed the kids charity. This feed the kids charity was including a leaflet in their meals that this church beliefs did not coincide with that leaflet i want to leave it very yeah with their biblical values is more or less what they with, put okay. in there with their biblical values in their, in their um so they supposedly this pastor wrote an email to a letter to the parish saying hey listen we're not doing this we're because the beliefs don't coincide so we're going to do our own thing well somebody who's not a realtor not licensed in that state consumer contacted a consumer that's never done business with this person before by the way contacted the board and filed the complaint that the person was being derogatory and discriminatory. And there is a code of ethics. Do you know which one it is? If you're a realtor. 10, 10-5. 10 10-5 that has a, um, hate say speech. what it is. A hate speech thing. Like you cannot have hate speech and it has nothing to do with in your real estate transactions. It's in your entire life. So I read this article and J-Man will post the link. Um, I've read the article. Are you looking for the article or oh, the no i can ethics. read the standard of practice is realtors must not use harassing speech hate speech epithets or slurs based on race color religion sex handicap familial status national origin sexual orientation or gender identity those adopted and effective november 13 2020 
Okay. So, and that has to do with all aspects. So that's not just in a real estate transaction. That's if you post something stupid on Facebook. So this person filed right. a complaint. All of, you all of your the, activities that now, that was changed in 2020 as well. Yep. All of your This activities. person filed a complaint. It went to the board. The board saw it fit enough to, hey, we're going to do a, it's not a trial, but we're going to do a hearing on this. So a complaint. my thought, a complaint, a com we file a complaint and complaint we're going to see if filed. this is just a, the complaint is filed and we're going to see if this is justified in order to find a person. So now I have a question here. If you're talking about everything you do and say, when you're not in a real estate transaction has to do with having your real estate license and that, that ethics. What about when you're in the metaverse? I think it would still apply. So the, this is the thing. I know there's a font. It's, there's a the font. way it says all of their activities. Okay. All. For, first of all, I would like to tell you all of you this. And again, this is my opinion, no opinion of everything else. That is the stupidest thing in the whole entire world to have what I do in my own personal life and what I say in my own personal life for an organization to find me based upon that. If I say something in my personal life and the consumers don't like it and the consumer doesn't want to do business with me because of that, I absolutely understand it. If my broker doesn't want to continue to hire me because they said something or did something that he doesn't believe in that is considered hate speech, I tell you, and I'm, and I'm not protecting hate speech at all. I do protect speech. So what determines what's hate speech and if we bring that or derogatory, mm -hmm. or making a comment because we're, um, listen, they're just, a member organization, so you you choose to be a member. That's always the fallback. Okay, correct. You choose to be a member, but you don't have access to an MLS unless you are a member. No, you could have access to the MLS without being a member. You could be a licensee and have access to the MLS without being a, without Two being a realty member anywhere. What was that? Mm -hmm. Two different memberships. You pay a mem most places. I'm not saying everywhere is the same. But many places you have an MLS okay. fee for serv you know, for that service, and then you have your your association fee, and that's where many of the associations, as they combine and share services, mm -hmm. are struggling because I could join one MLS and have access to, let's say, where yeah. where you're at. One key is all of Long Island, all the way up to the Hudson Gateway region, with one mm -hmm. MLS. I could join there and not be a realtor member. In theory, so, I'm not saying so. At what at what point? And this is this again. As we were talking about the metaverse, and I'll, and I'll we only have like two more minutes on this. So, at what point is what I do in the metaverse? Because again, it has nothing to do with real property. Does it actually relate to my membership in the National Association of Realtors? Like, if you're a, if you're a shady quote unquote real, because you wouldn't be a realtor in the metaverse. If you're a shady quote unquote acting as a real estate broker or a virtual real estate broker, and you do something shady in the metaverse at that point can someone file a complaint with my local board or association that they did something shady in the metaverse but i wasn't selling real property but it's all like activities. see see how this yeah see how this all it's like just this I, weird I thing like that it i think because it's, it's uh, here's why i think it's good and this would be another this could be another topic for for next you might have another topic for next week uh finally jeffrey um <laughs> but it's like people have challenges separating us from our profession two separate mm -hmm. people and they go jeffrey the person is a dick he does shady stuff and so because another jeffrey not you of course um does shady stuff and since he's a realtor then all realtors are also shady right i mean i think okay. that's where it, where it comes from where you're trying to differentiate because for many years people just said oh you're a realtor that's not a profession realtor means member yeah because I, I'm a real estate agent I'm a licensee I'm licensed to sell real estate realtor is not my profession but again to me you don't need your real estate broker's license to sell stuff in the in the metaverse because no you could sell swamp land in the metaverse until they come you up do with what swamp land in the metaverse yeah, until a board or association, and this is why this is why I leave it at this. This is why I think you need to be involved in the groups and the member and the and the organizations that you belong to, because this is when it starts. Where a board or association or NAR or Remedy or somebody else on the side says, you know what, we're actually considering that metaverse 
we're actually considering that it falls underneath our guidelines because of X. You know. Well, I I think it's going to be just like on Minecraft or Roblox and um, the folks who have relatives on there. Like I I know um, Sabrina can comment on this because uh, her son's the same age as, as my son. But it's like they're on a server. It has to be hosted somewhere. Somewhere. So the person who's running that owns that has to say all on everything because they can boot you and not allow you back in. So ultimately, there wherever was, that 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 metaverse as it grows and becomes a more tangible. Yeah, and, thing, and this is the thing: is there is there fair housing? Is there fair housing in the metaverse? Like this is the thing, and this is the thing. You're absolutely right. The service someplace, and that is a made decision. And again, I I used to be big into climbing and mountaineering, and there was this always saying that you like did? if you were. Yeah, if you were paying to go on Everest and you're spending a hundred thousand dollars to go for your I permit, learned, but, you know, I learned more about you in the, in these podcasts than I, I, I know. ever have. So listen, you're paying a sixty thousand dollar fee and another hundred thousand dollars to climb Everest or K two, and you're paying this and you're paying all the sheriffs. You climbed it, but you're paying. Universe. You're paying. I didn't climb it, but you're pay, I went to base camp. Um, you're paying a guide. This is the thing. Is the question is this, and we always ask: mm -hmm. Is who's the person who makes the decision mm -hmm. if other people are going to live or die? It's not me paying the money to go there. It's one person needs to make that decision. And it's just like that server is located in wherever. There's one person that makes the decision. Hey, I'm going to shut this off tomorrow and everything you spent just is not worth anything now because now it's off. Or you did something I didn't like. And so, so there's so much there like beyond and like it's new and we don't know. Like who has the power just to shut you off? Is it Facebook saying, eh, I don't like J-Man. He talked about Facebook. I'm shutting him off. You guys want to join me? so many me. variables here. Come join me because I'm going to be the expert of this in 12, 11 months. Minutes. Minutes. 11 months. <laughs> he has a podcast. Day. Everything he says is true. I'm going to start calling you the metaverse expert. Do it. It's going to happen. And that'll I'm, start I'm, to help. I'm not. I am going to consume and digest everything that I can find. I already listened to one I actually may just go about. buy an Oculus just to, just to play around with this and see. I had the Google VR headset. I've used it like three times, and that was about it. But that was a bunch of years ago. That was pretty. Well, I don't talk about Google either. Well, guys, so, uh, this three was... Kings Day. If you're gonna get me the Oculus, please let me know so I don't buy it for myself. Um... Little Christmas, little Christmas. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had no idea if this was much to say about nothing. It was much to say about something that had nothing to do with nothing that we were talking about. But we never know, like where it's gonna go. And Jamin really wanted this topic, so that's the topic. I steered it. I steered it you in said the you were direction do that, that I too. wanted. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, I think we're uh, we went a little long this time. <laughs> Not even gonna comment. What? Nothing. I could hit a softball out of the park with that one. Uh, let's see where our music is. Is it this one? It is now. Here, this is more. I was looking at the instant. All right, yeah. Let me bring it down just a little bit. Thanks for tuning in on so, your FM dial. So, I am Jerry Scott Dante. This is Jeremiah's J Man Monero. We're keeping it 100.100. It sounds like we're on Night Cruise. Your That's host right, for the Midnight Classics. Everyone's in cool mic here. This actually works perfect with the old. This is Jeff, and we're talking about the Midnight Crew. All right, everybody. All right, everybody. Peace and love. <laughs>